Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Lainey and I've been doing reactions to Obi-Wan Kenobi every single week. And we're at the midway point now and I just wanted to give my thoughts on the show so far because there's been a lot of different opinions and theories online. A lot of people have very strong feelings about the show, which as they should. If you're a Star Wars fan, then you're going to feel very strongly about this show, especially if you grew up loving the prequels. If you're a big fan of Star Wars, then you're going to feel very strongly about this show. But I just wanted to come on here, and since we're on the halfway point, we might as well like talk about it a little bit, talk about the main points, especially episode three. I want to talk about a few things. People were very unhappy with episode three, which was actually pretty surprising to me. I didn't expect the reaction that it got. I thought it'd be like, oh man, it's, they're back, everyone's back, Vader's back, it's so cool. And really the opinion on episode three is pretty split right now. And I just wanted to give you guys my opinion since we're all going through this together. I just wanna say right now that my opinion does not have to be your opinion. I'm not trying to persuade you to think like me. I'm just going to explain to you guys kind of my thought process through some of these things and I wanted to share it with you. You do not have to agree with me. I'm just, you know, speaking my mind. I'm just speaking about how I feel about it. And yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video because I'm excited to just have a different kind of video with you guys and I'm able to just talk and it just feels like we're hanging out. We're just talking. Yeah, so one of the first things I wanted to talk about with episode three was that a lot of people online are saying, oh, Obi-Wan was a wimp. His first meeting with Vader, was so underwhelming, he was weak, it was very uncharacteristic of him, Disney ruined it, all this stuff. I have to say that I completely disagree with that take. In my opinion, it completely makes sense for Obi-Wan to be completely overpowered by Vader at this point in his life. Until this point, Obi-Wan thought that he had killed Anakin. Anakin was his own failure, he had been carrying this guilt of failing him and killing him for the past 10 years. He cut himself off from the Force, so he is a very, very, very different Obi-Wan Kenobi than the one that we saw last in Revenge of the Sith. This Obi-Wan, as they've portrayed him in the show so far, he is consumed with fear and with guilt. Especially in that meeting, he asks Vader, what have you become? And Vader says, I am what you made me. And I, I said before in my reaction to that, that that is a huge line. And it especially zeroes in on the guilt that Obi-Wan does feel, especially after seeing that, oh no, Anakin is alive and he's become this ruthless, murdering Sith Lord that he never could have anticipated he would become. Completely reasonable for Obi-Wan to be overwhelmed by Vader. Vader was toying with him the whole time. He could have beaten Obi-Wan easily at this point. I think that without this first meeting, between Obi-Wan and Vader, back up. We all know that to keep continuity, Obi-Wan and Vader meet in A New Hope, and Vader says, when you left me, I was but the learner, but now I am the master. So we know at the end of this series, we have to see Obi-Wan defeat Vader in a battle. That will be the rematch of the century that they were selling to us when they were promoting this show. This was not the rematch that Disney was selling to us, and I know that but I think some people are getting that a little bit confused. Anyways, what I was saying, I think that without this first meeting, Obi-Wan would have no idea what he was up against in Vader. He would no, have no idea the power that Vader possesses and the revenge that Vader really, really, really wants to get on him. I think without this first meeting, Obi-Wan wouldn't know exactly how powerful Vader is and exactly how much it's going to take for him to actually defeat him. People were upset that Vader didn't just go through the flames, put out the flames like he did the first time and go and get Obi-Wan, that he just let him go and Vader would never do that. Some people have come up with really good theories. Like I saw one yesterday saying that Vader was probably waiting because he wants to defeat Obi-Wan at when he is at his best because then Vader gets even more pleasure of defeating Obi-Wan when he is at his absolute best, Vader's competitive, all the stuff. I can buy that. That is something that I can completely buy into. Before I even saw this theory, I was thinking myself that, oh, Vader is absolutely playing the long game. That Obi-Wan Kenobi, Vader absolutely saw that that was a weak man. He was already defeated. 
he was consumed with fear, and I don't think that is the Obi-Wan that Vader wanted to defeat. I completely agree with that theory in that spot right there. Vader wants to take everything that he possibly can from Obi-Wan. He wants to be the one to get him to that point, to that lowest, lowest point. As we saw, he absolutely wants to make him suffer. Vader at this point has had 10 years to think about the revenge he wants to get on Obi-Wan. So you best believe that he's not just gonna let Obi-Wan go without a plan in mind. In my opinion, Vader might have seen that someone was willing, you know, Tala, was willing to risk her life and go out of her way to rescue a Jedi. So now Vader has the opportunity to follow them to, I forget what the name of that planet was, it starts with a J, where they're smuggling and relocating Jedi. That would be a huge win for Vader and the Inquisitors and the Empire to be able to find that place where there'd be a bunch of Jedi at one time. Not only would he be able to get his revenge on Obi-Wan, but he'd be able to find and kill, maybe, all of the, those other Jedi. Yeah, that's just, in my opinion, what was going on with Vader. I don't think that he was showing weakness in any way. I think, like he said in the episode, he wants Obi-Wan to suffer, absolutely suffer. He's going to drag out that suffering. He's going to make it as long and horrible as possible. And like I said before, Vader could have killed Obi-Wan many, many, many times in that encounter. But I think Vader was thinking, mm, too easy, way too easy. At this point, it'd be like putting Obi-Wan out of his misery. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I see that people are already saying I'm over the show. It's not as good as they hyped it up to be. Disney's ruining it and all kinds of different things. And it doesn't affect how I feel about the show because so far I think it's fine. I don't think it's like, oh, this is the best show ever because we have to remember we're only halfway through this show. So three episodes may not seem like a lot, but they knew that they were working with six episodes. So these last three episodes, I think are going to be huge. At this point, we have like a very, very closed view of what this show is because we haven't even gotten to the last half of the show, you know what I mean? So I think to jump to conclusions like, oh, the show sucks, it's like stopping halfway through a movie or halfway through a show before even seeing where it's going to take you. And I don't think the show, there are shows that are bad enough to stop in the middle and be like, no, this is horrible. But I don't think that's what the show is, not at all, whatsoever. That's just my opinion. You guys do not have to agree with me. That's just kind of what I was thinking when I was seeing that all these people are um, saying that they don't like it, it's ruined, Obi-Wan's not the same, but like, I think that's the whole point of the show is that no, Obi-Wan's not the same. In this season, we're seeing how he goes from the horrible broken Jedi that he is after Revenge of the Sith to absolutely ready and willing to help Luke in A New Hope and face Vader again. Yeah, that's just my opinion on it. Like I said, you guys do not have to agree with me. I'm glad that we could sit down and talk about it a little bit. This is a short video, but I kind of wanted to make a video that would break up the reactions. So now we'll have three more. I'm so, so, so excited for the rest of the show. I am really hoping that Quinlan Voss has a bigger role than we think in this show. I think he might be the person that helps Obi-Wan figure out how to truly connect with Qui-Gon. I said before in a video that I think that when Obi-Wan is able to finally communicate with Qui-Gon will be when Obi-Wan hits his lowest point. I don't know if getting dragged through the fire and everything will make him hit his lowest point. I know that it would be my lowest point, but we just don't know yet. So this might be the thing that really pushes Obi-Wan to, we might see Qui-Gon in the next episode and people are going to say, no, nah, I'm over with the show. Like Qui-Gon is coming back. Let's just chill out, you know? Let's just chill out. He's coming back. And we got to see that, you know? I'm so excited for the rest of the show. I just wanted to get a few things off my chest and talk about it with you guys. I really want to know what you guys think too. And if you're disappointed in the show so far, I'm really sorry. And it's fine that you feel that way. But yeah, just let me know what you guys think so far. We're at the halfway point. What do you expect to see from the rest of the show? What are you hoping to see? I want to know for all of you that are kind of disappointed with the show, I want to know what it's it's gonna take what you want to see in the rest of the series that's gonna reel you back in and be like 
oh yeah, this series is great, it's amazing. Let me know what you guys want to see because I probably agree with you. A lot of what you guys want to see is what I think is definitely coming. We're going to see it. We just have to wait a little bit. We got to see Obi-Wan's growth at this point. I'm really glad that we were able to sit down, make this video, and kind of break up the reactions a little bit and talk about how I think the show is going so far. Thank you guys so, so, so much for all of the positive feedback you've been giving me. I love that we're able to talk theories and just discuss things in the comments of my videos. You guys have been really, really welcoming and I really appreciate that. Like, my channel is a little bit over a week old and we are already almost at 500 subscribers that's amazing it's absolutely amazing i can't thank you guys enough if you like this video make sure to like subscribe turn on post notifications because the rest of obi-wan kenobi is coming we've got three more episodes three more reactions i can't wait to experience the rest of this show with you guys and yeah let me know what you guys think about what i've been saying and let me know what you think about the show so far bye